All right, guys, welcome back for part two of our uh, frame build. Uh, I guess let's just say rear rear frame build uh, for this car project. So, um, you know, the first part showed you guys uh, how I laid out and then how I bent uh, the top tube for the frame rail section. Uh, this part, I'm going to show you the bottom part. I'm not going to go as in detail as I did on the first part just because I already went th over the, se uh, the steps of, you know, what I was doing. Uh, on that first part and really this is just duplicating that just making slightly different uh, bins you know to make the part fit how we need it to so uh, I've gone through and uh, laid out the uh, the pick points and all the the, the part uh, parameters what I need that uh, to be in the Bentec program uh, using measurements that I took uh, you know off of the the chassis table in the car uh, that sort of, th sort of thing. So, um, you know, took my notes, got my dimensions all laid out uh, in Bentec in a couple of different ways. So I knew, um, you know, exactly where my pick points would be and, you know, if the tube's kicking in and up how much and all that sort of thing. So got that all laid out and got the, um, the bent part uh, done in Bentec. So um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is making this section out of two pieces. So instead of like I did the first section, doing it all out of one piece, um, I'm gonna make it, making this out of two pieces. And the reason for that uh, is I'm going to have some bracketry that's going to be sliding through uh, or over this tube. Uh, so I'm going to have to obviously, you know, make that, um, you know, happen in a way where I can get the part in and out of the car and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be doing that also. Um, the the top tube had six bends in it total as one piece. This, but these bottom tubes are going to have, uh, if it was one piece, it would have eight bends. Um, and because of the angle of uh, two of the bends, it would inter the part would interfere with the bender, the ground, that sort of thing. So, because it's going to be interfering, uh, it's just going to be easier if I basically split it in half and bend two pieces uh, separately. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is there's going to be a split right in the middle at the rear of the chassis. So, um, you know, the point where I'll be starting to bend is like, say, what would be the rear bumper area of the chassis. I'm going to have that split in the middle. It's going to bend. It's going to go out and then bend forward and down and then up. And we're going to go, you know, from there. So um, I'll show you guys real quick uh, the steps on getting that bent not going to go in detail about uh, getting it all measured out because I did that in the first video. We have our measurements according to Bentec here. And so we're going to be taking these two tubes right here and um, getting them marked out here on the table. We'll throw them in the bender and then we'll get them in the car. So, um, and then at that point, once we get the lower tube sections in there, um, at that point, it's going to be a matter of connecting the upper and lower. So we'll have some riser tubes in there, uh, you know, to that we'll have to notch and fit to the upper and lower tubes, that sort of thing. We'll have brackets to make for all of the suspension mounting points. Uh, and then at that point, you know, once we get all that stuff done, then we'll be able to, uh, you know, weld and put all this stuff in place. So uh, let's get this uh, second tube in there and we'll uh, go from there. Well, I've got the tube in the bender now, and I'm going to go ahead and start bending this. Um, 
if you watch the first part of the video, um, or our first video on this project, uh, kind of walk through some of the steps on doing this, so I'm not going to repeat all that again. Um, I'm just going to go through our bend locations that we have uh, at the proper angles. So um, looking at the bend sheet here, uh, the first bend is going to be 90 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and punch that in on the bender, 90, and then um, we had a calculated spring back at 90 degrees of about 5.5 degrees, so we're going to punch that in. And now we're just in the full manual mode, and uh, so ready to bend. Got this tightened up to uh, the same spot. So uh, like I said before in the first video, when you're bending a part like this uh, and you're bending you know, multiple bends, always tighten this to the same exact uh, number just so uh, it creates that repeatability in your part. The tighter uh, or you know, the can the consistent tightness on the follower die here um, is going to ensure that if you're doing multiple parts that are the same, the bends are going to turn out. So uh, we'll go ahead and start bending this. All right guys, so I got both sides of this bent. Uh, what I did to be able to show it off on the table is I put the slug, there's a seam right here in the middle. So I put the, the slug in here, uh, you know, that we'll use to drill into and weld and, you know, butt weld this seam up. Uh, I put that in there to be able to hold this in place. So um, basically the measurements that we needed for this uh, width wise uh, was 26 and a half on the outside because uh, that's what the top tube is. So this section right here from this bend all the way up to the start of these bends here uh, this section is parallel with the top tube so uh, it's 25 inch center line of the tube which measures uh, 26 and a half on the outside edge so um, that looks good the height here off of the table to the center line of this tube was supposed to be uh, right at uh, nine and three quarter, uh, which it is right at nine and three quarter there. Um, that's from the bottom. So um, if this was center line to center line, uh, you're talking right at uh, nine inches from the center of this tube down at this point here to the center of the tube here. And that's going to leave us. So the top tube comes back and curves around here. And that's going to leave us an inch and a half gap here or along this straight section uh, that will set a couple of risers uh, on there that we've notched and uh, that's what we'll use to weld uh, you know the top tube to the bottom tube at this location so um, so the rear diff sits here in the middle the axle uh, the axles on both sides have to go through they're going to go in between the top and bottom tube and we've got some suspension mounts uh, brackets and stuff that we're going to be making to help connect them plus we'll use a couple of other notched uh, pieces of tube to connect the two at whatever points we decide to put those so um, the front measurement here uh, outside to outside was supposed to be nine uh, 39 and a half and that's exactly where we are 39 and a half which is 38 inch center line uh, of the tube which that matches the lower tube of the existing frame so Everything here is looking really good. Um, basically at this point, I'm gonna work on trying to get this mocked up in the car so we can see that it fits in place. Uh, the front lengths here from the front of this bend here, it's gonna have to get trimmed up, uh, you know, to be able to obviously fit in place, left it long, that way we had room in the bender for it. And uh, so now that that's set in there, we'll get those trimmed up and start getting this thing mocked up in the car and once we guarantee that everything fits then we'll start uh, solidifying uh, 
uh, the top and bottom tubes in the car so we can start making mounting brackets and all that kind of thing. So um, we'll work on to the next point. Alright guys, so I uh, got these tubes all set in place and what I was working on there was uh, you know, getting them kind of solidified, so getting them uh, set up at the right height this way uh, on both the top and the bottom tubes. So I got this uh, crossbar here uh, set up, tacked in place, and then some risers off of the table to make sure that this bottom tube was the right height here. And then, according to the way I designed it up, uh, also set up a couple risers here to hold the top tube at the correct height in relation to the bottom tube. So uh, that's all set up. I have another crossbar at the top this way. Uh, and these are all just tacked on just to hold everything in place. So everything was pretty solid back here. And uh, at this point, what I'm going to be doing is kind of going through just to verify a few things measurement wise and uh, some of the next things I'm going to start doing is um, and these bushings on here and these are the mount bushings for the rear differential center section that hangs in here so uh, I have some three inch material three inch round tube material uh, that these actually slide into so I'm going to get those cut to length get some tube sections on here uh, and then I have to design up uh, some crosswinker plates uh, that will capture these uh, and, you know, and mount in. So, uh, yeah, I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm not 100% sure what that's going to look like yet, but uh, we'll get that in. And some of the next things will be to start uh, actually locating and making the uh, bracketry that will hang off of the frame rails to some of these pickup points for the suspension. So some of that in there. The risers that I have in here, these are all temporary for right now. Uh, if I decide I can maybe move it or place it somewhere else, I will. But um, I will be making some permanent risers uh, to go in between the tubes just to you know, triangulate everything and hold everything in place to where there'll be as little flex as possible uh, in all these parts. So there'll be some added crossovers, some added risers. There's going to be risers in the back here. Uh, in between the upper and lower tube back here that'll get welded in. I'll have to make uh, rear body mounts that'll get attached to here. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're to the point now where we start solidifying everything, making mounting brackets for suspension uh, and all that. And the last thing, you know, once I kind of get some more things laid out, the last thing we'll do is actually start welding all of this together tube-wise get all that totally done, and then the last thing I'll be able to file well all of the bracketry on uh, for the suspension mounting points and the dips and all that stuff. So we're going to keep working here. Um, basically, uh, at this point now, what I'm going to be doing is uh, just trying to map out. The main thing initially is the crossovers for the rear diff mounts get these made and then also some of the there's this uh, rear the rear uh, mount of the lower control arm in the back has a mount bracket in here so I need to I still have it to where I can actually slide there's a, a seam here and I can slide this whole back uh, loop off of here so I'm gonna uh, get that moved out of the way and I'll start making you know my measurements up to where I need my brackets to hang for that lower mount and this, and hopefully we can incorporate all that together. That's gonna to be one of the key mounting points initially um, that we'll get done first, and then from there, uh, we'll start moving on to this. All right guys, so to show you what I've been working on here, um, working on making the rear brackets uh, for the very rear lower control arm mount. So, um, 
had the tube in here uh, in place for the bottom section. I still had that as separate pieces, so I slid that out of the way so I could get the fixture piece back in here. And um, so what I did was working on this side, uh, got my first uh, part of the bracket made, and essentially uh, what it's doing is this part here uh, captures the top tube, and then I have a notch in the bottom that's going to capture the uh, bottom tube as well. And then we have a hole right here for the uh, lower control arm mount location. Uh, and then I drilled and then put a dimple die hole just for uh, some added strength and uh, visual effect as well uh, on the back of that plate there. So by slotting a bolt in there, my jig fixture, uh, it stays in place uh, right there. So um, like I said, that bottom tube uh, of the frame, it's going to come out of here and then it, you know, bends up a little bit and comes around the back. But uh, so that'll be captured there. Uh, so I've already started laying out and marking everything for the other side to make the mirror image. So I've already got the hole for the uh, lower control arm mount. I've got the location marked here for uh, the dimple die hole location. And then I've got the two holes uh, locations marked for uh, what will be the notch for the upper and lower tubes. Uh, so uh, at this point, I'm going to drill these three holes. And then once those are drilled, I'll uh, trim up the top and bottom of the plates uh, to get that started there. We'll dimple die uh, the uh, hole here in the middle. And then the last thing we'll do is put the bend in the plate. Because uh, this one basically comes straight down and then it bends in. And that is about a 15 degree bend. So uh, that's the angle that the lower control arm mount is. Uh, so, um, yeah, we'll get that uh, angle put in here, and then we'll have mirror image plates uh, for both sides starting. So, uh, you know, you might be thinking that obviously this is a fairly crude uh, plate, and it's just pretty large right now. But once, uh, once we get both plates made, then we'll make the inside, or the front side, I should say, of the uh, mounting plate. So that will get made. Um, to kind of create a C shape uh, that will be around the mount this way and it'll attach to both top and bottom tubes. And then once those front plates are made, uh, from there we'll make the cross piece that is going to capture the two uh, bushing mounts for the rear uh, differential back here. So uh, like I said, we'll get these made have them complete on both sides, get the crossbar made for the differential mount here, and then the last thing will be to come in and cut a profile uh, and shape up this bracket here uh, to be, you know, more of a defined shape uh, and, you know, um, cut it down a little bit to minimize it, but make sure that we're still keeping the strength in the part. So uh, we're gonna keep working. We'll get these holes drilled, get these dimple dies in location. Uh, like I said, just wanted to show you guys how I started this bracket, and now I'll show you um, actually doing these holes and the rest of the process on making it.
All right, well, I made the first side uh, of this front bracket on here. So um, as I showed you before, I had the two rear brackets done for these uh, rear lower control arm mounts. Uh, and then they're incorporated obviously into the chassis. So got this front plate done, uh, or at least uh, built up in enough uh, way that we can get it in there. Still have some trimming to do and some finish work to do. Um, but uh, now that I've got it to this point, I've got the two tacked together for the one side. I'm going to cut out the second one using this plate here. So um, we'll get that lined up on there. We'll kind of trace and mark some of the stuff uh, and then I'll, uh, you know, drill the holes, punch what we need to uh, do the bend, the 90 degree bend and the uh, press brake uh, for that side there. And we'll show you guys the steps on that. All right, guys, so you saw uh, in that last clip, obviously we were putting together and assembling uh, all this stuff. We got this uh, part bent uh, in the little bench top uh, press brake, uh, the bend press there. So um, got that bent and then, um, yeah, we came back, tacked this together, got this fit. So this is the rough shape of this part that goes here. And so what I did is I went ahead and trimmed up the other side, uh, got this uh, cut kind of at a different angle here. So essentially the difference between this one over here and this one now is that this one over here has a, a angle cut in this and then uh, trimmed off the sides just to get those a little closer on this one, just to have a little more of the final shape here. And at this point, uh, I'm gonna be connecting the two sides with a cross member piece uh, that's gonna capture these uh, bushings for the rear differential mounts on the rear side of it. And uh, those will get welded to the inside edges of the uh, mounts here that I'm making. So this is what these plates look like uh, as a rough start. So these plates go here and there's two of them. So there's reverse sides. So uh, it's gonna be put together kind of like this and they'll slide the big hole here on each side is where the bushing will slide through. There's a three inch tube, uh, basically a three inch 16 gauge tube uh, here that the bushing slides into that that tube will get welded uh, into both of these plates on both sides. And then we'll get the edges trimmed up here uh, in order to fit the inside edges of our mounts. And uh, then once those are all fit, we'll be able to tack all that in place. And uh, the final thing, once, uh, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is catch this side up here to this side, make sure that they're all trimmed the same, fit the same, everything's cut the same. We'll get them mocked up, 
and I'm probably going to put a couple of small tacks to hold them in place. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is get this, these cross member pieces uh, fit in here on these bushings, get them to where they can be tacked to each side. Uh, and then the final thing will be to do any final fine tune, um, you know, trimming any kind of angles we want to put in these brackets if we want to change these outside angles or put any kind of shape into them get all that done and then the very last thing will be to slide this tube in place uh, so that it can be all tacked in and then this whole rear mount for the differential the rear mount for the lower control arms and that whole structure will all be in place and uh, ready to move forward with so um, yeah let's uh, let's keep going on this mount and uh, you know pretty soon here we'll be able to have all this in place here and uh, show you guys uh, what it looks like all together. Alright guys, so we got these, uh, both these mounts in place on both sides. Uh, I've got the cross member sections uh, cut and trimmed up, fit in the middle here. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to pull out the uh, cross member section in the middle, um, get it, get all the spacing right uh, as far as how it fits on the little three inch, um, I guess the steel sleeves for the bushings, get all that fit and uh, tacked in place. And then I'll put it back in and we'll tack these uh, cross member pieces here to the mounts on both sides, get that all attached. Um, and then at that point, once that's all attached, what I'm going to do is open up these holes where the dimple dies are just a tiny bit because I've got some tubing uh, that we're going to slide through here and uh, we're going to weld to each one of these holes to create some extra strength in these parts. Um, and then at that point, we'll be ready to um, do any final trimming or shaping that we want to do on the brackets. And then we can actually tack and weld these, um, this part in place across here. And it'll be one piece uh, in the back of the chassis here. So uh, we'll keep working on this and uh, get this uh, center cross member here fit and tack in place.
right guys, so uh, what we did there is weld in these little uh, sleeves into where the dimple die holes are in this crossmember piece. Got those welded in, metal finished it out. Uh, so now that's a nice um, you know, way to separate these two plates along with the uh, three inch sleeves where these bushings slide into. I am gonna be capping the top of this um, and the bottom just to make this a solid crossmember uh, on the top and bottom. Um, but uh, I'm going to wait to do that a little bit until we have a few other things uh, sorted out. So uh, at this point, uh, this is going to be it for the part two of this uh, rear suspension video, rear chassis video. So um, I guess that really in the next one, uh, we're going to keep working on some of these other mounting points uh, on the fixture, get those parts made in place, tacked in place. We're going to get the front cross member piece for the rear differential that holds that in place as well. Uh, I've got those parts already laser cut out and uh, just need to fit them in, notch them to the frame. We're also going to have a, another tube that's going to go across here uh, above where these bushings are that those uh, laser cut plates will then stitch to uh, across there. Um, you know, a lot of these other tubes that are in here, these are just temporary just to hold everything in place, square, level, you know, all that stuff. So. Once we get some of these other pieces in uh, and welded, then these pieces will be able to come out and uh, then, you know, we'll be able to start actually bolting some of the actual parts on this thing, put the rear diff in uh, and then put the suspension, you know, control arms on as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, this is the end of this video. Um, and in the next one, we'll basically be finishing everything out, remainder of the brackets, get everything welded and done. And that'll be it for this series. So um, thanks for watching part two, and we'll see you in the next one.